Hey guys, welcome back to more relationship drama stories. What would you do if your parents stole your credit card and booked an $18,000 vacation without your permission? Let's dive right into the story. I have always been the black sheep of my family, the odd one out who never quite fit in with my parents' expectations or my younger brother Jake's seemingly effortless perfection. Growing up, it felt like no matter what I did, it was never good enough. Jake was the star athlete, the straight-A student, the popular kid everyone loved. Me? I was just… there. Don't get me wrong, I love my brother, it is not his fault our parents put him on a pedestal. But man, did it sting to constantly be compared to him and found wanting. Why can't you be more like Jake? Became the unofficial family motto, at least when it came to me. I moved out as soon as I could after high school. Desperate for some breathing room, I put myself through community college while working full time, slowly but surely building a life for myself. It was not glamorous, but it was mine. No comparisons, no disappointment, just me doing my best to make it on my own terms. By 26, I'd finally landed a decent job in IT and I was starting to feel like I had my feet under me. I even managed to save up a little nest egg, not much but enough to make me feel proud of how far I'd come. Life was not perfect, but it was steady and manageable. Then came the phone call though, that changed everything. It was a Tuesday evening in late March, I'd just gotten home from work and was debating whether to heat up leftovers or order takeout when my phone burst. Call ID showed it was my mom, I hesitated for a moment before answering. Our relationship was strained at best and calls from her usually meant drama of some kind. Hello? I said cautiously. Alex, oh thank goodness you picked up. My mom's voice came through, sounding oddly cheerful. I have the most wonderful news. I braced myself. Oh yeah, what's up? Your brother Jake just got engaged. Can you believe it? Our little boy all grown up and getting married. My stomach did an unpleasant flip. Of course Jake was engaged. Perfect Jake with his perfect life hitting another perfect milestone right on schedule. Wow, that's, um, I mean, that's great. I managed trying to inject some enthusiasm into my voice. Congrats to him, I guess. Isn't it just marvelous? My mom gushed. We are all so excited. Oh, and that reminds me, we need to talk about the engagement party. I frowned. Engagement party? Yeah, yeah. Your father and I want to throw Jake and his fiancée a big celebration. Nothing too extravagant, of course. Just a nice little getaway for the whole family to toast the happy couple. Alarm bells started going off in my head. I knew my parents' idea of not too extravagant and my own were very different things. Oh, that sounds nice, mom, but I'm not sure I can... She steamrolled right over my objections and said, Don't you worry about a thing, sweetie. We've got it all planned out. A week-long Caribbean cruise. Won't that be fun? My jaw dropped. A week-long cruise? Mom, I cannot take that much time of work, let alone afford... Oh, pish posh, she interrupted again. It's all taken care of. You just need to show up. We leave next month. I'll email you all the details. Before I could get another word in edgewise, she said her goodbyes and hung up. I stared at my phone in disbelief. What the hell just happened? Over the next few days, I tried calling both my parents multiple times to discuss their crew situation every time they brushed off my concerns about the cost and time of work. We told you it's all handled, they'd say before changing the subject. I had a sinking feeling in my gut, but surely they wouldn't, right? No, they were my parents, they wouldn't do something like that to me, right? Wrong. It was about a week after that initial call when I got the email notification. Thank you for your purchase. The subject line read, Confused, I open it up. My blood ran cold as I read the details. A cruise package for six people, total cost $18,246.79. Or pence, I guess. Charged to my credit card. For a moment I could not breathe. This had to be a mistake. A glitch, a scam, something. But as I logged into my credit card account with shaking hands, the charge was right there in black and white. I felt like I was gonna be sick. How could they do this? How dare they do this? In a daze, I called the cruise line. Maybe if I explained they could refund the charge and go after my parents instead, but my hopes were quickly dashed. I'm sorry, sir, but the booking was made using your card details and verified with your security code, the customer service rep explained patiently. 
As far as our system is concerned, you authorize this purchase. We cannot issue a refund at this point, especially since the cruise is set to depart in less than 30 days. I hung up my mind reading the security code. They had used my security code. Which meant with a growing sense of dread, I went to check my wallet. And sure enough, my credit card was missing. They must have taken it when I visited for dinner the week before. I always kept my wallet in my jacket pocket. It would have been easy for one of them to slip it out while I was in the bathroom or something. The realization hit me like a punch to the gut. My own parents had stolen from me. They had taken my card, made an enormous purchase without my knowledge or consent and then lied to my face about it for days. I felt betrayed, furious and utterly helpless all at once. What was I supposed to do now? That $18,000 charge maxed out my credit card. Even if I could somehow get it removed, the due date was in less than three weeks. There was no way I could pay that off in time. My savings were nowhere near enough to cover it. For a wild moment I considered just letting my credit tank. But no, that would screw me over for years to come. I couldn't let my parents' actions destroy my financial future like that. With shaking hands I picked up my phone and dialed my mom's number. It rang several times before going to voicemail. I hung up and tried my dad instead. The same result though, damn it, I muttered fighting back tears of frustration. I fired off a text to both of them. I know what you did with my credit card. Call me back immediately. An hour passed, then two. No response. By this point I was seeing red. How dare they ignore me after what they had done? Did they realize and think they could just get away with this? Before I fully realized what I was doing, I had grabbed my keys and was heading for my car. The drive to my parents' house took about 45 minutes, plenty of time for my anger to simmer and build. I pounded on their front door hard enough to make my knuckles ache. Open up! I shouted, I know you're in there. After what felt like an eternity, the door cracked open. My dad peered out looking uncomfortable. Alex, what are you doing here? I shouldered my way inside, ignoring his protests. Where's mom? I demanded. She's, uh, she's in the kitchen, he stammered. Alex, what's going on? You seem upset. I let out a harsh laugh. Huh. <laughs> Upset? Oh no dad, I'm way past upset, I'm effing livid. I stormed into the kitchen where I found my mom sitting at the table with a cup of tea. She looked up as I entered, her eyes widening. Alex, what? Cut the crap, I snapped. I know what you did, I know about the cruise, how could you? How dare you steal from me like that? My mom at least had the decency to look ashamed. My dad just looked annoyed as he came up behind me. Now hold on, he said, I think you're blowing this out of proportion, we didn't steal anything. We just borrowed your card for a family expense. I whirled on him incredulously. Borrowed? Borrowed? You maxed out my credit card without my knowledge or permission. That's not borrowing, that's just theft. Don't be so dramatic, my mom chimed in. We were going to pay you back. Eventually. We just need to book the cruise quickly before the deal expired. You should be happy. This is for your brother's engagement celebration. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Happy? You want me to be happy that you stole $18,000 from me? Do you have any idea what this has done to my credit rating? How am I supposed to pay that off? My dad waved a dismissive hand. Oh please, it's not like you have any big expenses coming up. You're not married, you don't have kids. You can handle a temporary setback for the sake of the family. His casual disregard for my financial well-being was the last straw. You know what? F this. F both of you. I'm calling the police. Their faces paled. You wouldn't, my mom gasped. Well, watch me, I snarled, pulling out my phone. What followed was a blur of shouting, police sirens and tearful explanations. I filed a formal report for credit card theft and fraud with the police. My parents were horrified, alternating between begging me to reconsider and angrily insisting that I was overreacting. How could you do this to us? My mom wailed as the officers took their statements. We are your parents. I just shook my head feeling drained. How could you do this to me? I countered. I'm your son. As I left the house that night, I knew things would never be the same between us again, but I also knew I had done the right thing, no more being the family doormat. No more letting them walk all over me. Little did I know though, this was just the beginning of a long and messy legal battle that would tear our family apart. The next few weeks were a whirlwind of police reports, credit card company disputes and tense family drama. My brother Jake called me repeatedly, alternating between confusion, anger and pleading. Come on Alex, he said during one particular heated call. I know mom and dad messed up, but do you really have to take it this far? Can't we just work this out as a family? I sighed, pinching the bridge of my nose. Jake, they stole $18,000 from me. That's not a little mistake or misunderstanding. That's a felony. But they are our parents, he protested. They have always been there for us. How can you turn your back on them like this? I could not help but laugh bitterly at that. 
always been there for us. Maybe for you, Jake, but they've been undermining and belittling me my entire life. This was just the last straw. He was quiet for a moment before speaking again, his voice softer. But I didn't realize that you felt that way. I'm sorry if I contributed to that. Part of me wanted to accept his apology, to try and salvage at least one relationship from this mess, but the larger part was just too hurt and angry. Thanks, I guess, but that doesn't change what happened. I am not dropping the charges. Jake sighed heavily. I understand. I hope someday we can work past this. I love you, bro. I hung up without saying it back, as the legal proceedings moved forward, more and more unpleasant details came to light. It turned out the cruise wasn't the only thing my parents had charged to my cart. There were several smaller purchases scattered throughout the previous month, restaurants, clothing stores, even a spa day for my mom. All told, they had racked up nearly $20,000 in fraudulent charges. The prosecutor assigned to the case was a no-nonsense woman named Linda Reeves. She laid out the situation for me in stark terms during our first meeting. Your parents are facing some serious charges here, she explained. Credit card fraud over $10,000 is a felony. They are looking at potential jail or prison time, hefty fines and a permanent criminal record. I nodded, feeling a mix of vindication and guilt. What kind of sentence are we talking about here? Linda leaned back in her chair, tapping her pen against her notepad. Well, that depends on a few factors. Their lack of prior criminal history works in their favor, but the amount stolen and the fact that it was premediated rather than a crime of opportunity or desperation, that's not good. We are probably looking at two to five years in prison, plus restitution of the full amount stolen. My stomach lurched. Prison? My parents might actually go to prison because of this. Is there any way to avoid time? I asked, surprising myself. Why was I even considering alternatives after what they had done? Linda gave me a measured look. There might be. If they plead guilty and agree to full restitution, we could potentially work out a deal for probation instead of prison, but ultimately, that's up to the judge. I left her office with a lot to think about. Part of me still wanted my parents to face the full consequences of their actions, but another part recoiled at the thought of them behind bars. It was a hard line to walk, holding them accountable without completely destroying our family in the process. In the end though, the decision was not up to me. My parents, in their infinite wisdom, decided to actually fight the charges. We didn't do anything wrong, my dad blustered during a tense phone call. We are your parents, we have every right to use your card for family expenses. I was flabbergasted. Are you serious right now? In what world is an $18,000 vacation cruise a necessary family expense? It was for your brother's engagement, my mom chimed in shrilly. Don't you care about Jake's happiness at all? I had to take a deep breath to keep from shouting, of course I care about Jake, but that doesn't give you the right to steal from me. And what about the other charges, the restaurant, the clothes, the spa day? Were those for Jake's engagement too? There was a telling silence on the other end of the line. That is what I thought. I said flatly, look, if you just admit what you did and pay me back, we might be able to work out a deal to keep you out of prison. But if you keep fighting this, it's only gonna get worse. We are not admitting to anything, my dad said stubbornly. Well then, see you in court. True to their word, my parents pled not guilty and demanded a trial. The next few months were a nightmare of depositions, evidence hearings and mounting legal bills. I had to take time off work to meet with the prosecutor and testify, which put a strain on my job. The stress was starting to affect my health, I was not sleeping well, my appetite was shot and I developed frequent tension headaches. Through it all though, my parents maintained their innocence. They tried to paint me as an ungrateful, spiteful child who was blowing a simple misunderstanding out of proportion. Their lawyer even had the gal to suggest that I'd given them permission to use my card. It was just infuriating but also deeply saddening. How had we gotten to this point? How could the people who raised me twist the truth so blatantly? The trial itself was mercifully short. The evidence against my parents was overwhelming. Between the credit card statements, the cruise line records and my testimony, there was no real question of their guilt. The jury deliberated for less than two hours before returning a verdict. Guilty on all counts. I thought I would feel triumphant when the verdict was read. Instead though, I just felt hollow as I watched my parents' faces crumble in disbelief. My mom started sobbing and my dad just looked shell-shocked. Sentencing was set for the following month. I braced myself for another round of angry phone calls and guilt tripping, but to my surprise they maintained radio silence. It was Jake who finally reached out to me a week before the sentencing hearing. Alex, please, he begged over the phone. You have to do something. Mom and dad are falling apart. They could go to prison. I sighed heavily. <sighs> what do you want me to do, Jake? They are the ones who decided to fight this instead of owning up to what they did. Can't you talk to the prosecutor? Ask for leniency or something? 
I pinched the bridge of my nose again, feeling a headache coming on. It doesn't work like that. Ultimately, it's up to the judge. Jake was quiet for the moment before speaking again, his voice thick with emotion. They are not perfect, Alex. I know they have hurt you, but they are still our parents. Please just think about it, okay? After we hung up, I sat for a long time, turning the situation over in my mind. Did my parents deserve leniency? Part of me still burned with anger over what they had done. The day of the sentencing arrived though, the courtroom was tense as we all filed in. My parents looked haggard, like they had aged years in the past few months. Jake sat behind them, his face drawn with worry. I took a seat on the opposite side of the aisle, unable to meet anyone's eyes. The judge, a stern-looking man in his 60s, called the court to order. Mr. and Mrs. Thompson, do you have anything you would like to say before I pass sentence? My dad stood up slowly, his shoulders slumped. Your Honor, I… we never meant for things to go this far. We love our son, we thought we were doing what was best for our family. We realize now that we were wrong and we are deeply sorry for the pain we have caused Alex and the position we have put him in. My mom nodded tearfully beside him, unable to speak. The judge considered them for a long moment before speaking. I've given this case a great deal of thought. The crime you committed is a serious one. You betrayed the trust of your child and stole a significant amount of money from him. That cannot go unpunished. I'm sentencing you each to three years in prison. You are also ordered to pay full restitution to the victim in the amount of $19,873. There was a collective gasp from my family's side of the courtroom. My mom burst into fresh tears. Jake looked like he might be sick. As for me, I felt numb. It was over and I also felt glad. All in all, my feelings were twisted. As the bailiff led my parents away, Jake caught my eye from across the aisle. His expression was a mix of grief and betrayal. In that moment, I knew our relationship would never be the same again. I left the courthouse alone, ignoring the reporters clamoring for a statement. My phone buzzed with messages and missed calls, but I couldn't bring myself to look at them. I just drove home in a daze, collapsing onto my couch as the events of the day washed over me. I had won. Technically, my parents were being punished for their crimes and I would eventually get my money back, but it didn't feel like a victory. It felt like the end of something fundamental, the final nail in the coffin of my relationship with my family. As I sat there in the growing darkness of my apartment, I made a decision. It was time for a fresh start. Away from the drama, away from the pain, away from the constant reminders of what had happened, I needed to build a new life for myself, one unburdened by the toxic dynamics of my past, and the next day I put in for a transfer at work. There was an opening at our West Coast office that I'd been eyeing for a while. It would mean a cross-country move, but that suddenly seemed perfect. Jake called a few times, but I let it go to voicemail. I was not ready to deal with his hurt and anger yet. Maybe someday we could rebuild our relationship, but for now, I needed space. And yeah, Ripe Stars, if you enjoyed this story, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Also, I'm curious, if you would have been in Alex's position, would you have forgiven your parents slash family? or would you have done the same as him? I fully agree with what Alex has done. His parents betrayed him and stole from him and they certainly don't deserve his empathy. Either way, let me know what you think in the comments. And now let's move on to the next story. It starts like this. When my mother passed away, I was left on my own to figure out what I wanted to do with her house. I mean, I grew up there and a lot of the furniture was even still the same. I was not ready to just sell it, so I decided to move in and see what happened. I lived there for only a year and I can tell you that I had more neighborhood drama in that one year than the rest of my life combined. A few days after I moved all my things in, I had a welcome committee from the HOA show up with a gift basket and fake smiles. I already didn't trust them because the ladies here are all of the very fake variety. Still, my mom taught me to be polite so I thanked them for it and let them talk to me. HOA people, we just wanted to wait for you to settle in before coming by with the paperwork. Wow, a whole three days to settle in. How generous of them and a show of their patience. Me, well, thank you. I appreciate the warm welcome, but what kind of paperwork? HOA, for the house of course, you are moving in now. Me, oh, I mean I filled out the paperwork to gain the deed and all that stuff already. HOA, no, we meant the paperwork for the HOA. The contract to sign to just keep everything tidy. Me, I'm sorry, but I actually didn't have plans to join the HOA. At least not right now. HOA, excuse me, but this is not optional and we are not really asking. You need to agree and sign in in order to live here. We also need to do an inspection of the house to see the state it is in. I knew that this was a lie and the neighborhood had an HOA, but it was not a mandatory buy-in type of deal. 
They were trying to force me into it and that was what finally got me to break the nice guy's smile and give thanks to them straight. Me? Actually, I don't need to sign anything and I sure as hell don't need to let you come in and snoop around on my property. Take your basket and just get off my property. I closed the door on them, but later that day I found the contract in my mailbox. I looked through it out of interest just to see how insane of an HOA they were running. It turns out it was very crazy because they seemed to think that they could do anything they wanted as long as they put it in a contract. Mandatory allowance to inspect the homes once a month, right to use the property for community events, fines for lawn decorations outside of pre-mentioned time periods. Who the hell would want to own a home just to have all these insane rules? I did not sign the damn papers, but that did not stop the HOA from sending me more contracts in the mail as well as fines. That's right, I was not even part of this HOA and they were trying to get me to pay fines for breaking their rules. Specifically, two of the ones mentioned above because I won't let them in my house and they consider a couple of lawn gnomes horrible. It just kept coming too, with things getting more stupid by the day. I was fined for leaves being on my lawn during the damn fall. I was fined for my car being dirty the day after a storm that left everything muddy. My grass was too long and then too short and then not green enough and on and on. Keep in mind, I was not paying any of these so it was just adding up to a huge amount I really cannot imagine they expected me to pay. Over $560,000 of fines for rules I never agreed to. I was okay just ignoring it all and making it be the best continuing story ever for my friends. The joke ended the moment they crossed a line. That line being the law. I came home from work to see those same HOA ladies in my house. They were going through all my stuff while marking things on clipboards. I was furious and started yelling and demanding to know what they were doing in my house. The reason had so little logic it baffled even me. They decided they could break in because they had a right to check my house and that I was refusing it. The stuff they were writing on the clipboards were things that I owned that they were price checking the worth of. Since I did not pay they figured they could just take my things away to get the money. Which honestly is just mind blowing on so many levels. Ignoring the entire illegal activity part, I want to know what they thought I owned that could be worth that much money. The house itself was only worth a bit more than what I owed them. Did they really expect my TV and computer to sell for half a million? I called the police right in front of them and they still didn't think that they should try and leave before getting caught. I told the cops that I came home to them having broken in and going through my things they wanted to steal. It was not a hard arrest because the woman agreed they broke in and claimed that they had a right as the HOA to inspect my house and to get the money they were owed. Instead of taking me to civil court like a normal human person, they were all arrested on the spot for breaking and entering and attempted theft. I figured now was a good time as any to get a lawyer and take them to court for all the HOA crap as well. I would get a leg up once they were found guilty in criminal court for breaking in illegally. Plus of course attempted theft and harassment. I will tell you the results of that in just a second. In civil court I wanted to basically make sure those HOA fines would go away just in case. A judge declared the fines to be sent illegitimately due to me not being a part of this HOA. Along with the court now knowing exactly what they were doing to people. Since they did not take anything from me I was not entitled to any money from them. That was okay with me because all of them were going to jail for breaking into my house. The remaining HOA members were getting in their own deep trouble once people found out that the HOA they were forced into was not mandatory. They had a lot of fights and instead of taking it all to court they just went bankrupt and shut down to save themselves from joining their leaders in jail. Since then it calmed down by the time I decided to sell the house and move on, who knows if I should have stayed longer or even shorter if it wasn't for all the HOA drama. I knew I couldn't stay in that house forever, but the last year I spent it in might have had more excitement than the entire childhood I spent growing up in that place. No matter what I like to think that my mother would be proud how I handled the HOA since who knows what those monsters did to her while she was still alive, old and vulnerable. And the next one is a malicious compliance story. And if you enjoyed the title story then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and maybe even like the video because that would help me tremendously. Thank you so much. Arkansas has well known laws that lean heavily on the side of the property owner which leaves the renter pretty vulnerable to owners who want to be difficult to say the least. Or at least they did when I lived there. 
Honestly, I doubt much has changed since then. So I move into town and I find an apartment intending for it to be a short period of time while I scout the town and look for a more permanent place. As for paying rent, they wouldn't and couldn't take an automatic monthly check from my bank or charge my debit card monthly, it had to be a paper check from me with a 4 day late fee window. I hate writing checks and I had the cash, so I paid out the 12 month lease all at once. I find a great place about 6 months later, thinking I will just break my lease and pay the extra 1 month penalty and walk away from my apartment. So then I call and let them know that I'll be moving out. Long conversation short, the way the lease is written makes you think that's how it works when in reality, at a second or third read, I'm still liable for the entire 12 month lease and to break the lease essentially adds a 13th month worth of rent money. Knowing that upfront, why anybody would break a lease is beyond me. So at this point I've already made the deposits on my new place, when all this comes to light so I am stuck with two places. I then tell the apartment complex that I won't be moving out, figure I'll just go ahead and let the lease run, set the AC to 80 and open the breakers to keep costs low. I slowly move my stuff to my new place since I have plenty of time now and in the end I leave behind my ironing board and iron just to leave something and I never really use them anyways. About two months later I get a call from the power company asking if it's okay to transfer power into somebody else's name. Shocked I reply, absolutely not, by laughing a little on the inside. I decide to give it a day before I call the apartment complex. First thing the next morning I get a call from the apartment complex with a super snarky entitled tone I hear, we need you to drop the power from your name so the new tenant can take over and move in. I explain that I still have an active lease on the place and I cannot fathom why they would rent it out. She accuses me of abandonment and therefore she is allowed to rent the apartment. My reply went along the lines of, I rent that apartment with the sole intent of having somewhere to iron my clothes. Did you not see my iron and ironing board there? She said she did and she took it to the office to get it out of the apartment. We go back and forth on the semantics for a little. I let her know that I'm open to receiving a refund to the date on the new tenant's lease and at that time I would be happy to drop my name from the power. She refused and the call ended with getting her boss's number from corporate. After mentioning to her boss that I can recognize a breach of contract when I see it and that nowhere in the lease does it say I actually have to live there, not to mention her employee admitting to entering my apartment and stealing items of mine from inside. She quickly assured me that they are putting a check in the mail that day, refunding my money to the first of that month and told me I could go to the office to pick up my iron and board anytime. Yes I know they could have run up the power bill but they would only be able to do so much really and a few days is not that huge and they didn't do it anyways. Even if they had it would still be worth the expense considering the refund. And yeah guys with this we have reached the end of the video. However if you cannot get enough of my content please don't forget to subscribe to the channel to not miss any of my daily uploads and also check out my podcast by searching for Ripe Stories on Spotify, Amazon, Audible and other podcast platforms. You will often find exclusive exclusive episodes and early access to new content. Furthermore, please check out my Patreon by going to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube or my YouTube membership program for even more exclusive stories. Thank you so much and I will see you again tomorrow. <laughs> oh.